guys, Matt from Australian Pipeline Supplies. Just going to do a bit of a um, patch uh, demonstration setup for you guys today because I think there's a bit of a grey area um, in the existing um, DVD that we've got. So I just want to try and cover a few more angles and go through a bit of the installation and different types of packers and things like that, how to treat your packer. Um, you've, you've really got to be careful with, with your bendy packers because they are a rubber product and they do stretch over time. So you really got to take care of it. And the number one thing that kills packers more than anything is when it comes in contact with resin. So to avoid that, it's always, it always helps to give it a good coat of, of a, um, a silicon spray. Um, don't use petroleum-based sprays because it's our experience that petroleum-based um, uh, sprays on your pack are actually absorbed into the rubber. And um, once that happens, then you get resin contact with your rubber, which uh, shortens the life of your packer. So um, after every patch that we do, and I train guys to do the same thing, just literally get a, a silicon spray and just coat your packer. And what this will do is it'll obviously um, give the rubber a nice coating, but it'll um, it prevents things like cracking and just the rubber drying out. Um, get your packer tube now. You would have all been given your kit. It's basically, a plastic product. Resin resin won't stick to this product. Okay, so um, we use this every time we patch. Uh, it's your prerogative if you want or not, but I suggest you do because, as we already said, you know the number one thing that will kill your packer is when resin gets in contact with it, and this will prevent that. So it it will tear. It's not designed to. Um, contain your packer, but it's designed to protect it and stop whatever rubber dust, for example, like now, if you use a packer, I'm just going to slide this straight in there. Um, a couple of elastic bands. Neatly. And that way it's pretty much ready to go for when, when you're ready to do your next patch. So you just stick it now in your store it wherever you store it, preferably in I would say a bit of four inch pipe or something like that, just so it's nice and safe there. And now no dust can't get on it and it's it's got a nice coating on there, so it's a good way to maintain it. Okay, so we've got a bit of pipe that we've sort of set up to kind of emulate a pipe in the ground. Look, I mean, let, let's be honest, it's never good. A bit of pipe that I'm putting a patch through here is always going to be a lot easier than anything on site. But it gives you an idea of how you can set everything up and apply it and use your camera and that sort of stuff. So you can see here I've drawn a couple of holes in it. Um, obviously, you're not going to have the luxury of being able to see this when it's in the ground, but um, I'm hoping you get the picture just through how we, how we actually do that installation. Um, so basically every job's different and you really need to um, you really need to be good on your camera. You've got to figure out exactly what it is, especially when you come to things like measuring. So we measure everything off our off our uh, little rigid camera. Um, it doesn't need to be rigid, we like these because they're small um, and you can and they've got a good vision scope on it, but I mean you guys can be discerning when it comes to that yourselves. Um, so we would have our um, liner the size according to whatever the patch is. Now typically with these these smaller packers here we'll try and get as much lining on it as we can because we can and if you can cover a if you're doing a bend for example then why not cover both collars you know um, if you're doing a straight bit of pipe you may as well get as much liner in there as you can. Um, the way that the resin set up is one of these little guys here um, is a one meter 100 mil liner it's enough resin to do that piece so um, you literally it's two part you mix it shake it up pour it on your one meter of liner or whatever length it is for your packer i think these little packers here are about eight 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 fifty roughly um but yeah you, you basically measure it's we, we've measured them into these quantities to save you guys how to do the maths basically because it can get a little confusing when you start talking ratios blah blah, blah. um just the uh, 150 mil ones, I haven't got any here, they're a little bit bigger, same thing though, two part, they're designed for one metre of uh, 150 mil liner. Um, your liner itself, 
you get it like this. It's uh, got a plastic coating on the outside, and then on the inside is the fabric. Okay, so what you need to the, the reason it comes like that is a uh, because it can't get dirty like that, so it, um, you haven't got to worry about it all getting stained up. Uh, what you need to do, of course, is invert that liner to the whatever whatever length you cut. You just literally put your hand in there and pull it out like so. Um, this one we did a little bit earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> okay, so that there's been cut to cut to size, and it is. Where is it? There, okay, so that one's eight fifty. Okay, so, um, but guys, different packers again, um, different size liners, whatever. Um, I'm going to do a video in a minute as well with the, with the, the special uh, gully multiple gen, multiple bend packer, uh, slightly different application. So if you're not sure, just pick up the phone and call us because we'd rather you got it right than you know tried to whack something in that was the wrong application and then you know who knows what will happen. Um, okay, so we've got our pipe here. It's clearly got some issues. So what we need to do is. So we need to measure the distance of the patch that we need to put in, and the way that we measure it, all of our um, all of our liners is off our camera, and it's as simple as having your camera in the line there, uh, and and you can see off your camera there, you know that okay, right here is my break, um, so I know that my patch needs to be start at least there, and then as I pull it back, so I will mark that now with my finger on the on the reel. And as I pull that back, I know that I also need my liner to be that long. So I know that my liner has got to be at least that long. Okay? Um, obviously, in a straight bit of pipe, you don't have any restrictions. So you can put a full piece of liner on as long as it's long enough to cover long enough on your packet, which it is well and truly. So with this one here, we're just going to put that full piece of liner on and we know we're going to be okay. Okay, now we typically, where we can, especially if you're doing a bend, we'll always mark the centre of the liner. Um, and it's easy enough to do, fold it in half and put a mark on it. All this does really is gives you like a bit of a, a bit of a bearing when it's in the pipe because it's Sometimes a little bit disorientating off your camera to recognise where the actual centre is. Um, and if you're in a bend and you've got your camera coming down at it, you'll see the you'll see that black line on the bend. Whereas if you didn't have it there, you wouldn't be really sure exactly where centre of your uh, packer is. So anyway, that's that. Um, plastic protection sheet. Always roll it out a little bit longer than your packer. So this is a brand new packer. I'm not going to use this one today because I don't want to run the risk of getting resin on the, uh, the end. So I'll use one that I've been using for a while. Exactly the same packer. Um, always want to have a rope on the back of your packer, no matter what. You don't want to have to rely on your airline to retrieve your packer. Um, so always tie a rope on the on the uh, on the eyelet. Um, where we can, especially if we're going around bends, we'll always try and pull our packer into position. Um, it just makes life a lot easier if you can be pulling it, and if you can push it as well with push rods. But typically, uh, we do try and pull them in wherever we can. Um, so in your pack, you've got air, you've got a, a little regulator, which is your, basically your inflation device. Um, Real simple, you've got an on and off on the top. Um, air comes in through there. There's a little arrow on the outlet, which gives you direction, but if you put air, your air from your compressor into there, it won't uh, blow up properly. And it's a pretty simple mistake to make. Um, so yeah, anyway, air comes in from there. So we've got two hoses, 30 meters in total. One there with a male and a female. Um, and then this one here with two nails. So that is the one that will come from your compressor. Um, and it goes to your gauge. 
and this one here is what will go from your gauge uh, into your packer, okay, or your push rod. Always connect your gauge <laughs> into your uh, short hose first. If you don't, if you connect your short hose into the compressor first, it'll drain your compressor, it'll make a hell of a noise, the hose will fly around. I've done it already. Now it's connected. Um, that's wound out, so there's no air to, to, to put air in. Basically, turn it clockwise. Okay. All right. So we're pretty much ready to go. You're going to need some elastic bands because you've got to fasten the uh, the line up onto your packer. So we don't need tape. We need some gloves. It can help guys if you're doing this too to have two guys, especially when it comes to um, wetting out your your liner, fastening it with elastic bands it gets a little bit tricky on your own. But we'll give it a crack. So yeah, anyway, as I've said, um, we know. I know off my mark on my liner, centre of my liner there, that I roughly want that mark, you know, sort of at the beginning of this first hole here. So I can, I know that if that's the case, then that whole break's going to be covered. Okay? So, areas where you've got to be careful or where you've got parts of pipe missing or junctions and stuff like that, you've got to be really precise with your measurement in there. Um, just call in about that stuff, I'll give you a few, a few tips or some sheets that we've drawn up on, on where, where, to, where to contain your packer, where not to, and you've just got to be careful with that because that's another thing that could blow your packer up if it's not contained by pipe or calibration tube, which is the... which is a, a uh, PVC product which is designed not to stretch. So that will actually hold your packer, um, it won't allow your packer to grow beyond its capabilities. Um, in pipe you don't need it because it's already, the pipe's doing that job for you. But um, if you were going over a junction or something like that, then it would be a good idea to, to prevent your packer from running the risk of bulging up into that uh, junction. There. So, um, okay, we're pretty much ready to go. Got my resin. Just with the resin too, like different resins do different jobs, have different curing times, different qualities, different types, blah, blah, blah. Keep it cool if you can. The, the, the optimal temperature for this resin is 15 degrees and very rarely do you have the luxury of 15 degrees, you know, especially uh, in Sydney or Queensland, or whatever. Um, so we always keep it in the fridge or just take a little cooler with you and stick it in there uh, while, you, while you're doing all your preparation, just so it keeps the temperature of the resin down. Um, it'll buy you a bit of time, which you will be grateful for um, in the long run. Um, other things you can do to cheat, like if it's a really long run and you know, you've got to pull your packer a long way, then it's a good idea to maybe pour a bucket of soapy water down the drain or something, just to, just to uh, lessen the friction um, and just, just help it into position a little bit more. Um, okay, so we're ready to go. As I said, two part resin. Literally pour one into the other. One's got a little less than the other, so... Okay, so mix the two parts resin together. Start shaking. Just make sure you shake it, get it all uh, mixed thoroughly, otherwise it'll affect the, the uh, quality the way you want, turns out. The good thing about this resin is too, you know, if you're a little bit left over, just chuck it in the bin. It's not a big deal. Like this. And you will often, I mean, this is designed to do one metre of 100 mil, um, and I mean, at 850, you're going to have a little bit left over, but it's no big deal. Just chuck it out. <clears throat> okay. 
It's always handy to have rags on hand too. This stuff gets, can get pretty messy. Okay, so just get your resin right into the corners, especially up here. I always just pour it in one side, flip it over, and then in this side here we'll really, really get into it, and then that will hopefully rub it into both sides. So obviously through the centre of this liner is that plastic coating, um, so there's no resin actually in the centre of that, uh, like, you know, there's no resin coming in contact from side to side, it's just on the outsides, which is going to be the new which is what's going to join the outside wall of that pipe, so that's what's going to be forced up into your cracks and collars and stuff like that. Okay, so you've got to be careful, you've got to make sure you get it right into the edges and stuff too guys, because you can sometimes miss that, as I have here. You don't want to get this resin on you, it's a nightmare. Oh, it's not too bad, it just gets real sticky. It won't kill you. I don't think. Not this year, anyway. <laughs> okay, so the way we check to make sure that it's impregnated properly is just peel the ends back, and if you've got any white in there, um, it's not done enough. There, yeah, that one's okay. This one's okay. This one's okay. I mean, we—that's that's pretty. That's pretty safe, I think. So we'll uh, we'll leave that there and crack on with it. So you've got to grab one end of your liner. Um, if you've got someone to help you, perfect. If you don't, well, just deal with it. And be careful too, because obviously this stuff drips everywhere, so. Make sure it's centre, and you literally just hold it, and you fold it, and then we fasten it. So, Do you want a hand there, mate? Once you get the first one on, that sort of. Probably about every 150 mil. Elastic bend. I can feel already that, that resin starting to heat up, so you really don't want to take too long with this stuff. Once you mix, that clock is ticking, so you want to get it in as quick as you can. One more on the end there. Okay, that line is pretty set there, so I'm just going to put a rope on the back of that. Um, probably should have done that beforehand, to be honest with you, but I uh, 
spielen. Always take this right up over the end of your uh, packet tube there. And the reason we do that is so when we put our camera in to check that the um, the camera doesn't go up into the packet tube. <laughs> then you're in trouble. So this can be connected. Oh, I put them in the now if you're in a job or you're carrying to someone's house, you just literally will pick up the entire piece of plastic like so carry it into the house and you won't drip anything anywhere and just put it at the point of entry there and um, off you go so we're not using a push rod today um, we probably could have used a push rod So that's going to position. Now, just with your plastic, at least when you've done that, you can fold it up and then you chuck it in the bin. Huh? So the way that I would check it is I would get my camera. As you can see here, I've actually put tape, duct tape along the spring just so it doesn't the resin won't get into it, so I'm going to put this camera in there just to check. And what I'm looking for is that black line, so I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but that's pretty much where it is. I can see the hole in the pipe, so I know I'm pretty close there. Okay, so um, Same principle in the drain, you just... Um, Obviously, it's not going to be as simple, but if, if you can try and line those points of references up, then uh, you should be okay. Um, you can go up, check your liner, make sure it's all good at the end. Yeah, come back along. There's my mark. Beautiful. Give your lens a wipe. You will get a bit of resin on your reel, but I mean, it's not that big a deal. We always just give it a good wipe down and pull it out. Okay, so we need air in. At this point you can pretty much glove off. If you want to have, um, if you want to leave your camera at the back of the packet or watch it expand, it's probably not a bad idea. Um, we'll often do that. Um, in this case, obviously, it's pretty simple stuff, so we don't need to. But um, so the way that your your uh, regulator works, as we said, we've got air off, air on. So the air is on at the moment, and to put air into it, I literally just wind it. Now, each um, packer has a different. Uh, inflation pressure so make sure you know what your pressures are before you um, start filling it this packer uh, we're going to inflate to 28 psi okay um, and you can see there the packer now is start, starting to expand so we're at 20 pounds now and you can see it's starting to uh, take form. You'll actually see it will sort of grow out into the uh, end of those holes, which is what you want. Because I mean, the idea of doing this is to prevent, you know, tree roots or eliminate a water source more likely for um, for plants or trees. So anyway, that's it. That's pretty much done. So 
that's on a little bit more there. Tight's 28. Okay, yeah, cool. So we'll leave that now. For this particular resin, it'll take uh, one and a half hours. Um, one and a half hours, we'll come back, we'll deflate that, and we'll pull it out. And, um, we'll stick a camera in there and have a look at it. Okay, guys, we're back now, 90 minutes later. Um, this has been cooked out, and uh, we're going to pull this packer out now and just see how it went. So, to um, pull the packer out, turn your air valve to off. So it's perpendicular with the valve. And then wind the gauge anti-clockwise. Okay, so now we're just going to pull that out. That's it. You can see how it's swollen up into those holes. How's my orientation? I'm upside down? Okay. No, you're not upside down. So that, folks, is patching 101.